The battle between heaven and hell begins with a battle between brother and brother. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 4. This was a very enjoyable season to review. It was very fun. The amount of story-centric episodes in this season was quite surprising to me. Every time I think about season four, for some reason it's always in the back of my mind of the core five seasons. When it comes to wanting to watch any of the seasons, four is always in the back of my mind for me in terms of all five. And I don't know why, because this is honestly the best season of the show so far. Not only in just in terms of generality, but actually by math. This is the best season of them all. This had a 79%. And the only reason why it's a little bit lower than I would have expected is because of the dip down in quality after the mid-season finale. There was a few episodes that they had that just really didn't cut it. There was a lot of filler episodes right afterwards. It's much better to admittedly have your filler episodes in the middle of the season than let's say, I don't know, leading up to the finale of the fucking show. But there were so many solid episodes in this season. Just trying to come up with the top five best episodes of this season was so difficult. I had at least 10 episodes and there's so many in the honorable mentions but there's so many that you got to list off that are just fantastic starting off with lazarus rising one of the best if not the best season opener in the entire show's history fantastically introducing castiel the idea of angels in the realm of supernatural and the overall grandiose battle that is to come between angels and demons all to try and prevent a bunch of seals being broken in order for Lucifer to rise once again. The idea that Lucifer was an actual bad had been alluded to very, very lightly in season three, and then we find that the plan, the whole thing that Yellow Eyes had with Sam and all the other gifted children was leading towards this. Having actual payoff for the things that you've been building is so satisfying to see in this show, and considering this is not only paying off what we've been building, but it's again building itself towards what's going to be season five, the original kind of ending of the show. So many great elements are introduced into the show other than just Castiel. We have Uriel, who is a really good guy you like to hate. He had a real cool two-sided to sort of combat to him. I liked Anna as this fallen angel character type. Eventually a lot of the character aspects that she had would be compounded into Castiel as we'll see in season five, but I liked her inclusion in it. Ruby played by Jared Padalecki's wife in this season admittedly kind of did split people. We didn't have the same kind of spunky give no shit attitude that Kate Cassidy had, whereas Geneve kind of gives a different more somber, more relatable sort of performance. And admittedly that had to happen for Sam and her to kind of work as that. I couldn't have seen Kay Cassidy being the same character as in a relationship with Sam. And then there was also a lot of really great one-off characters. Alistair, expertly played by Boney Chin Man in Head on a Pin. Just such, such a good episode. Just a fantastic villain, such a fantastic character in the show. But also at the same time, we had development with the brothers, of course. Dean coming back from hell and eventually, very slowly, explaining to Sam the very tortures and nightmares that he went through down there. And all the while we see Sam knowingly ingesting demon blood, which he knows is wrong, but he's trying to do so to do the right thing. At least that's what he's being proposed to by Ruby, but eventually we find out that he's being jinxed, he's being duped. And the brother's relationship comes to a complete standoff, obviously, at the end of the season, with the two of them wanting to do the right thing but thinking that the other way is wrong. There's a lot of great visual elements in this season. There's so many fun moments throughout. If this season is this good, I already know that season five is going to be fantastic, but I'm actually kind of curious if on the math season five can beat season four just because of how solid this one was. There was only one bad episode throughout this entire season to me and that was Family Remains. Otherwise it's fantastically put together. Every single part of this season helps build towards the final climax being season five. It also had some great moments of horror as well as humor and some very very much needed emotional drama between the brothers themselves. This unfortunately also was the last season we got to see any work from Kim Manners. I did a short video talking about him and his career leading up towards Supernatural and just what he brought to the show. So if you guys would like to watch that please watch it. It was a real fun treat putting that together and just talking about this guy and the amount that he brought to this show and the 
level of craft and creativity that he would bring to the show's narrative elements and to how the brothers portrayed themselves in their narrative aspects. So in the end, it's a number to beat now, but so far season four is the best season of Supernatural that I have reviewed in entirety. I'm going to give season four a six out of seven. That is kind of surprising to me. I actually did a long wait since reviewing the last episode. I think I thought about this for about two weeks before I did this number. But yeah, it's great. It's so darn good and I cannot wait to start talking about season five with you guys. But before that, I've got to do my best and worst of my top five for each. These are the glorious days of Supernatural for sure. My personal favorite season of the series as a whole. Where do I start? It's such a monumental shift from what came before in the introduction of angels to Sam's power slash addiction to demon blood and the notion of Lucifer walking the earth. Just a ton of what I would consider to be Supernatural's best episodes. Even some of the lackluster ones to me only seen that way because of the fo they're following some of the best the series has to offer. I'm looking at you. It's a terrible life. The thing about this season specifically is I really like the layout of having the two-parters for the main season arc episodes while having room for fun one-off episodes to play around with. The angels and demon dynamic is fresh and the angels being mysterious and powerful with the demons, especially Alistair, being intimidating and powerful. And just interesting to watch while towards the end of the series coming to across a demon was a minor inconvenience and the angels are just deep powered to the point of being totally lame. Obviously Castiel is a special place in most of our hearts and it's really good to see him have something to do, be a total badass doing it in contrast to what they end up doing with him in latter seasons. Season four is a banger and I can't wait to see the season five videos. Cheers. No, you're pretty much dead on here actually. The idea of that just the show just fully encompassing its, uh, encompassing its big, big original ender. Um, yeah, the idea that angels and demons being powerful and eventually they just got nerfed to the point of ridiculousness. But yeah, there's a lot of really heavy story episodes, the story related episodes, and it's such a turn from the first season, which had so many what like just kind of very nonchalant episodes. When I was a teenager, I used to feel like season three was the most absolute perfect season. And as I grew older, I feel like season four honestly surpasses season three. I'm sure season three was shorter, which made uh, I'm sure season three being shorter, which is made the tension of Dean going to hell all the more nail biting. But I feel like season four really handled uh, the uh, the angels coming to the show. Monster of the Week episodes definitely show the, play, the pace down of the season, but they're still really enjoyable, and when they bring back the main storyline, it is so engaging. Sam and Dean have the same goal this season, however they go about it differently, which was a good change of pace for us to understand their characters. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's exactly it. They were trying to go after the same thing, but I you stated from completely different angles and I can't get enough of how much I love Bobby being a fine addition and father figure to the brothers but there's no doubt at all that I love the additional characters we got to witness this season some that were killed off sadly however Misha Collins really gave a whole new dimension to the show that in a way it represents something you don't you didn't know you wanted but got and it's awesome that's actually a really good way to put Castiel that, that is a very good way to describe his character and the influence he had on the show for the most part overall i'm excited to really talk about season five and why it's my second favorite season of the show i'm amazed at how much you've done with your prep work in these reviews and i really appreciate the time you go back to reading our comments if there's any way we can help uh us your patreon supporters are here for you thank you joe i really do appreciate that and i appreciate your guys's comments too this is honestly a really fun engaging bit to do this it's it's always fun to see what you guys have to say and honestly i learn a few things too about the episode that sometimes i'm just not able to see because i'm trying to blast through these seasons right jeremy genuinely thanks so much for your reviews and how much effort you put into them it is much harder than it looks i and i'm sure others appreciate your perspective as a local and industry insider it's fun rent it's been fun ranting about how good the show was and how bad the show turned out fuck sake stabs so thank you for the forum personally i wouldn't participate if this was a lame page where everyone loved the show you worked hard for each and every snickers bar oh i love it when people make snickers bar <laughs> jokes thank you tom i appreciate that as well I, I really appreciate all you guys making the comments it's really cool to see that there's a cut like a you know a, a a consistency or i don't know just a community there we go that's the word i'm tired i apologize uh, as you point out like uh, a local and insider industry i just worked uh, like a 14 hour day today so <laughs> it was pretty big when i watch a show and i'm invested enough to make when I watch a show and I'm invested enough, I make top 10s about it. I literally made a top 10 for everything in this show, for uh, even for the seasons 
and season four ranked at number two, and that's how good it is. I love the season that are I love the seasons that are plot driven and the stakes are high. That's why I think season one hasn't aged well in comparison to the others. Yeah, no, I'll agree with you. Um, it's fun to watch, kind of partially. You can just kind of watch it in an episode here or there, but overall, it's not as strong, definitely, as the latter is. Season 4, however, is basically the march to the apocalypse. You can't get more epic than that. It's like preparing for the ultimate battle on The Walking Dead, only it, is, it, only it is exciting and you don't want to put yourself to sleep. So many episodes are filled to the brim with plot and character development, while others humorous and provide a necessary levity. This resulted in this season having only five bad episodes, but even then, they're not that bad in comparison to season 14 and 15. They are, that had nothing but bad episodes, having only five if it's honestly impressive. If there was one truly bad aspect about season four, it's definitely Ruby. When the show originally began and season three aired, people rightfully despised uh, Bella for the awful character that she was. However, some of that hate went on to Ruby, resulting in mixed reception. As a result, Eric Kripke reduced the character and changed the story he originally had for her, that is, a demon turning good into something that will ultimately have a character die so he wouldn't have to face much ba uh, fan backlash. This storyline would thankfully be explored with Meg in later seasons, but what he did with Ruby backfired. It felt unnatural and such a drastic change from what we've seen before. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, but if we can't excuse Andrew Dad for the staff uh, for the stuff he retconned, then I can't excuse Eric Kripke from blundering Ruby's character. It would have. It could have worked if the actress was able to convey that change, but because Kate refused to take a pay cut she was replaced with Geneve what else is there to say about her she's like Tara Reed and early Kirsten Stewart fused together she's like a robot when she acts all in all this aspect was definitely not planned when was botched in the process but again that's the thing the rest that's the thing the rest of the season is so good I occasionally ignore Ruby no moving forward with my favorites now moving forward with my favorite season in supernatural history actually you know that's a pretty good point when you talk about how um uh meg would become that aspect funnily enough that's probably something that sarah gamble did really well with if i'm correct that that meg really gets that kind of development in season six and season seven but yeah no uh yeah, there's a lot of plot no you point out all the good and then yeah you actually like your your criticism of ruby's really well done um it's probably the one aspect of the show that definitely kind of came up and they had to kind of make do with what they had um considering the search circumstances that they got put into by themselves honestly but no uh, you all good points I'm curious to see what your top and bottom five episodes are for this season. For me, season four is probably the easiest to rank because the highs are so high and the lows are so low. And despite the abundance of filler episodes, it's my favorite season. I love how concise, uh, cohesive and self-contained it is while building off on of, of previous material and forward building what's to come. Nope, that's a good point. Um, there's actually not that many lows. You, when you guys, like, when you see the, the worst episodes, quote, quote, worst episodes, it's meh it's not that bad there was only like one bad episode season four is one of my favorites and i really didn't like that what they did with ruby i think that they just wanted to get rid of her because the female fans hated her just like they did with anna and bella talbot originally she was supposed to return in season four and i love bobby this season and castiel i gotta say the producers made a right decision to keep misha collins in the series castiel is my favorite character but i hated the way he was treated throughout the series yeah, no, um, Castiel definitely was supposed to be, like, a, he wasn't supposed to be there as much. Hell, I think he was supposed to die really early on. Same with Bobby, obviously, but those are two characters that were just so well-received that people wanted to keep them around. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.